you reap what you sow. Galatians 6, 7, King James Version. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Everyone on earth is just like a farmer working on the farm. We all have seeds we are putting into the ground, and all of these seeds that we have planted will surely sprout and bring forth fruit. It is the law of life. It is what you sow that you will reap. There is no way out of this. There is no way to bypass this. Ask yourself today, what am I sowing? All the things that I've been sowing, are they good or are they not? Verse 8 of Galatians 6 says, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth of the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. After asking yourself what are you sowing, you can also proceed to ask yourself where are you sowing? Some people might have planted the right seed, they have prepared the seeds, but they are sown in the wrong place. This is what you need to ask yourself. Where are you sowing? With or without the knowledge of agriculture, it is a known fact that there are different kinds of soil. And the way all of these affect the growth of a seed is different. If you want a better result, you must sow on fertile soil. If anyone drops seed on the rock, where there is no sand to aid the growth. The seeds will die. If seeds are also planted on the pathways, when they manage to grow, people will mash them till they die. Where you plant your seed in this life is very important, just as the type of seed you are planting is important. We hear many people talk about getting what they were not expecting. What you are getting now might not be the result of the seed you sowed yesterday. It might not be the result of the seed you sowed a few days ago. This could be the result of a seed that you have sown many years ago. The Bible says God cannot be mocked. What this phrase means is that you can't plant an apple, then harvest a banana, then laugh at God that you outsmarted him. You can't do something bad and escape the result of the bad thing you have done and then say you outsmarted God. God cannot be mocked. God cannot be deceived. Another thing for us to know about sowing is that it is not only about the type of seed you sow or where you are sowing, it also has to do with quantity. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, King James Version. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. What is the quantity of seed you are sowing? You can't sow just one seed and expect a plantation. One more thing about sowing is that if you sow one seed, it will not become a plantation. But one seed could give you a great tree with many fruits. All of these things are just how life is designed. They are the spiritual laws of life. It applies to every living soul, Christian or not. As Christians who desire a good result in the future, how should we sow? 1. Sow with faith. There was a famine that came to the land, and Jacob was in that land. The best option for the people was to run away to the land of Egypt. Jacob was about to leave too, but God told him to stay back and sow in that same land where there is famine. Genesis 26.12, King James Version. Then Isaac showed in that land, and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. You might take it like it should be easy to follow and obey. Let's consider the modern day. A business is just coming up, and God told you to invest in the same small business that seems to be irrelevant. That is also the same thing that happened to Jacob. There was a drought and no harvest, but Jacob obeyed God and stayed back. He did not only reap a hundredfold, but also blessed him there. God is telling you to do a particular thing, but you are skeptical about it. It is because you are applying no faith. Every farmer does not sow without faith. When they are planting, 
They believed the seed will grow to give multiple folds. Hebrews 11.1 1, King James Version Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Has God been telling you to start that business? You have the idea, but you are letting it die away. You are not planting it because you are afraid that it might not be great. Look at the mustard seed. It is very small compared to other seeds, but when it is planted, it becomes a tree. Mark 4, 31 and 32 King James Version. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up, and become greater than all herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. In case you don't know, a seed can die. The idea that you have in you that God is telling you to bring to reality can die if you keep it for too long without planting it. If Jacob did not listen to God and refused to plant the seeds he has with him, they would have been rotten and nothing would be available to plant anymore. People are walking up and down the street with ideas that they are not putting to reality. They have allowed the ideas to die in them. You can sit back and be thinking of how you became great because you have an idea in you. Without sowing it, it will die. Faith requires action. Take action. Move into action. Greatness doesn't come through ideas in your mind. It comes through ideas that are put into reality. You can't deceive God by saying He should bless based on the ideas you have alone without working in them. It is not possible. Take a step of faith today and so. How long are you going to sit in the corner scared of the risks of life? Everything in life involves risk. Life is risky. Getting married is risky. Falling in love is risky. Starting a business is risky. Driving your car is risky. Life in general is risky. Nothing in life comes without a risk. Take action. You need to sow. 2. Know what you are sowing. This is important. You can sow with faith, but do not even know what you are sowing. Do you have an idea of what that seed can grow to become? It is like seeing a seed and then without proper research and knowledge of the seed, you plant it. When it starts bringing fruits, they are poisonous, but you don't know. You take from the fruit and it causes you harm. It is what you sow that you will reap. If you sow poison, that is what you will reap. You must know what you are sowing. To have faith doesn't mean you should act foolishly. It doesn't mean you should choose to be selectively blind to what you are sowing. It doesn't mean you should not have the understanding of what you are sowing. Taking a risk doesn't mean you shouldn't know what you are getting involved in. Do the research. What are you sowing in your family or marriage? What are you sowing in your education? What are you sowing in your career? Or what are you sowing in your Christian life? When others are sowing hatred, you can sow love. When people are sowing violence, you can sow peace. As a Christian, what are you sowing? Do you even have the idea you want to sow? Some children started well, but unfortunately, their parents had sown hatred in them. Some parents have sown addiction into their children, drug addiction, sexual addiction, or other kinds of addictions. The parents thought they were living their lives but they don't have an idea of what they are sowing into their children. As a parent, you need to be cautious of what you sow in your children. You need to start sowing the Word of God in them every day. Your children are watching you and you are sowing in their lives. You may think they are not paying attention, but they are. They are like sponges. 3. Know that the devil will come to sow on your farm. Matthew 13, 25, King James Version. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. If you think that the devil will allow you to sow a good thing and will be okay with it, then you are mistaken. 
The earlier you know that the devil is going around to look for a life to destroy, and one of the ways he will do this is to plant tares. If you see someone who claims to be a Christian with bad behaviors, doing sinful things, it did not just start in a day. It is just a result of tares that has been planted in their lives. You need to identify these tares in your life and uproot them. They may be hard to find because they are not easily recognized, but you must find them. You realize that bad thoughts come into your mind all the time. You start to wish people bad. This could be a tear. You are always afraid of moving forward. You don't always want to try new things. This could be a tear in your life. If you allow hatred to grow in you, you will reap something destructive someday. You need to pray to God constantly to open your eyes to the tears that have been dropped in your life. If you refuse to, and it grows, you will reap what it brings, and it is always destruction. Ask God to help you identify them and remove them before it becomes a problem. God is ready to save you. Are you ready to allow Him to? Do you know the ultimate seed that you need to sow in your life that will give you success, make you great, give you prosperity, purify you, and give you wisdom? It is the Word of God. Are you sowing that in your life? This life is not about the material things alone. Don't focus on sowing material things all the time. Look at the Word of God. It is a seed that will also grow in you. The Word of God helps you not only in the physical, but spiritual too. If you are placing your focus on the flesh too much, you will realize that you will be sowing all you have in flesh. And the Bible tells us the importance of where we sow. The flesh brings corruption, while the Spirit brings life. It is your choice now to choose whether you want to sow in something that will not last or something that will live forever. To sow in Spirit means to sow in Christ. It means you are putting everything you want to do in Jesus Christ. If you are sowing in flesh, it means you are just doing it with your power without inviting Christ to it. You need to sow in Christ because we need Him to bear fruit.